is actually me. I'm going to uh, present a little bit about some work we did with spotted wing drosophila. So just hold on a sec. And um, back. so I'm going to present on a couple of studies projects that we did this summer. Um, one was looking at different types of baits and traps for monitoring for spotted wing drosophila and then we did a little work um, along with Lionel and Hollis and Bev down in Mount Vernon um, looking at different attract and kill type um, methods for pesticides um, for SWD as well. So starting out, why would we actually want to scout for SWD? And I know some of you guys do scout and some of you don't. Um, it's, there's, there's definitely a reason to scout. You can understand when SWD is coming on in your field, the seasonal trends, um, when the populations are increasing, so what's going on in your field. And then you can evaluate your treatments. So after you have treated something, you can look at how well did it work. You can scout either looking at catching the adult flies or you can um, do some dissection or um, evaluation of what's going on actually in the fruit itself. Um, this can really help with your spray treatment, uh, even though it is um, obviously a calendar treatment or insect resistance management, as Lionel likes to refer to what we're doing right now with SWD, but um, understanding what's going on in your field either before you treat or after you treat can be helpful as well. So what, um, what we wanted to look at was what's the best way to actually do some um, scouting, what's the best way to trap for these. Um, there's some new traps out there. We wanted to evaluate them up here in northwestern Washington and a lot has been done in Oregon. Um, obviously we've had the standard clear cup with the apple cider vinegar as the standard and uh, it worked okay. It, was, it worked for our first shot. We were catching some flies but maybe there was something better out there. So what we did, we worked with Amy Dreves down in Oregon to look at, to decide on different types of traps and baits to use and we looked at some different trap and bait combinations and I'll get to those in a minute. Um, we looked, we did uh, three to four replications in each field and we set them up at four different fields in Whatcom County. Set up in early June, monitored till the end of July and each, they were put in about one post in from the edge of the field and at least nine meters or three rows between, between traps to get some separation. Um, so here's the traps we use. We use the standard 10 hole clear cup that we've been using for the past few years. Um, here's a new one. This is one that Amy developed with a, it's this craft mesh glued on the sides and it gives a bigger surface area for the flies to get into. So even if they're attracted to the whatever the bait is in there, there's a, it's easier for them to find their way in there. And then we also did this on the red um, little solo cup and just looking at is the red more attractive. And then we use a couple of commercial traps. There's the Contact commercial trap and the Captiva commercial trap as well. And these both have red on them as well, to, um, perhaps suggesting that there is a attractivity with the red. The baits we tried, um, apple cider vinegar was our standard. And then we used the bread, yeast, and sugar combination, which, which uh, has showed promise in years past. There's a different yeast. It came in a pellet format. Um, and it was, it was a Torula yeast and I can get, if you're interested, I can get more information on any of these. Um, there's the Monterey insect bait and uh, that's that corn steep liquor some of you are familiar with. There's the Suzuki eye trap, it was, uh, it was developed in Spain that Amy had brought over and we tried that. And then there was these Biolure baits sachets, they were just these little packets and you had three of them in there. and. Um, it actually smelled like rotting meat when we opened them up and put them in there. So, you know, that's obviously attracting something maybe different. It, we'll see, but it didn't do that well. And I'm, I'm actually pretty glad because the smell was not that nice. Um, so some of the results that we got, uh, this is farm three and I have these in funny order just so that I can, um, it just makes a little more sense. But um, you can see here, on this farm, we had uh, only looked at oops, we only looked at trap styles, and you can see here that the where is it um, the clear cup with the mesh sides did did pretty well. Um, what's that one? The um, 
The red cup with the mesh sides also did well down here. Um, the Captiva trap did well later on as well as the red cup again here. But there's, there's not much difference early on in the season. Um, later on that clear mesh really started to take off. And then, um, then, then another farm we did, we looked at just the baits. And this was an organic farm, so we were trying, did you have a quick question, or? Um, they were all, um, these were all the bread, yeast, and sugar bait, yeah. And so this was the bait only, and these were all in the clear mesh cups for this one. Um, you can see the apple cider, or where are we? Um, the, the, these blues are kind of tricky. This is the apple cider vinegar down here. And up here is actually that, that bait from Spain, the Spanish bait. So we'll have to find out more about that and get some more information. But the bread yeast also did really well. That yeast sugar combination did really well. And that's a bit cheaper combination. Although if you're looking for convenience for having something that you just pour in your cup, that Spain bait might be a little bit nicer to use. We then tried some combinations on a couple of farms. Um, we tried the 10 hole clear cup uh, compared with the mesh with some of the different, uh, and clear mesh and then red mesh cup with some different bait combinations here. Um, it's a little scattered. I don't know if we can really get much, much information from this. Um, you know, we have this big peak here, but not sure how much that's really going to tell us at this point. Um, here's an different combinations that we had with the um, mesh and the bread yeast. We had some, some pretty high numbers, especially early on this season. This is when the field would have been tr treated um, down here in late June, early July. But again, the bread yeast looks to be pretty promising for that. So um, what looks good for these, the mesh sided cup, as I said before, has higher surface area for those um, spotted wing drosophila to get into. Um, the yeast overall looks better than the apple cider vinegar, although it's more um, time consuming to mix it up and uh, it's kind of goopy, so it, it's not necessarily as nice to work with, but it seemed to catch more. Um, and then again, there's some promise in that Spain bait. Um, not sure about the availability at this point for that. Okay, so I'm going to move into our. We did some a bit of trials on attract and kill. So why did we do this? Um, we wanted to look at applying an attractant along with the pesticide, especially for um, organic pesticides where there's a lower residual value. So within trust, if that's all you have, you might want to have something to bring the flies into the field to um, touch that insecticide right after you apply it rather than um, waiting for them to come in. So attracting them in to get hit by the pesticide right when it goes on. And so what we did, we had some Elliott uh, blueberry bushes in Mount Vernon, um, early September. We had an untreated check. We used just Entrust, and then we had Entrust along with certain attractants. Um, this PFR is a fungal organism that uh, I think it's um, Certus is out here, and they have it here. And it um, uh, looks like it's going to be a, a potentially could work as a pesticide as well. So we tried that. Um, Blossom Protect is another attractant. And um, it, it goes along with a buffer, and then it had a sugar as well on there. And so what we did was we um, applied the, we flagged some bushes, and then we flag, oops, flagged um, branches on the bushes to pick berries from. We sampled the fruit before the treatment, and one week after the treatment, each treatment we treated it twice. So we took three samples of the fruit, and. Um, inspected them for infested infestation. So unfortunately on our um, results we got um, oops, we had our highest number of infested fruit in the interest plus PFR plus the bread yeast plus sugar so I'm not sure maybe that the attractant just attracted them. Um, is this attracting the SWD but not killing them? So maybe they're we are getting attractivity there, but there's not any, the pesticide's not, not killing them at that point. Um, but really, we didn't see much differences here among the 
the other treatments that we had. <clears throat> so then we tried a, um, a greenhouse trial to see if we could um, see any differences between these baits uh, within SWD in a mesh dome and we had um, a, a bait in a little cup with an overturned funnel over top of it. We released a bunch of SWD in a mesh dome. Um, we had three replications of that and then we checked under, after one week to see how many SWD we actually trapped in there. Um, as you can see here, one. so we had entrust in one, entrust with a media that is what the SWD are, are grown on, I suppose. Um, the Entrust plus the bread yeast plus sugar is that one. Um, Entrust plus the Blossom Protect plus the buffer plus sugar. Entrust plus the PFR and Entrust plus PFR plus bread yeast plus sugar. Um, I'd, I guess this Entrust attracted a lot and so did the bread yeast and sugar. Um, some of these others, it looks like the bread yeast and sugar really increased the attractivity, but I don't know if anything is conclusive at this point um, from this. We are um, trying a different model right now and it's in progress. And so this is what our, our new trap looks like. Our old trap had the, um, the funnel upside down and this time we have the funnel open at the top so now it's easier for them to get into and then they get trapped in there more easily. So you can see this little cup in the bottom there, that's where the bait it, and entrust is held. And so um, will this work? We'll see. We'll have some results um, sometime next week and then if you do have any suggestions for trying these or if you have any interest in them, um, come and you can let me know. And um, thank you very much from our funders, Daryl. If you've got just a, if you got just a few, uh, 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 doofus, I call them doofus fly. But anyway, uh, that that uh, if you got uh, hardly any of them at all, once you start seeing some of it, it's usually about the time you'd start spraying. Yeah. Uh, because I find that some people are waiting until the count goes up before they go in, and by this time they're late. Yeah, that's true. So you. There are different reasons that you might want to trap, and one is to see what's going on early in the season. The SWD is probably not going to be an issue for you on your fruit until they start coloring. So they're not going to lay eggs in your fruit until they start coloring. And I think, Lionel, you can um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is what we're recommending is that people, once you start getting that pink fruit, is when you start your treatment goes on. So you can put them out in your field and see, okay, am I, do I actually have a population out here before that's, that's even happening? Um, and that might, just to give you an idea of what's going on in your field, it, it kind of depends on if you have a bunch of other um, uh, hosts on the borders of your field, you might have a higher population there. Can you give a bit? And, and then this is the last question. Uh, another thing I noticed though, see I, I raise a lot of nuka variety raspberries and I find it usually we can make it all the way through our harvest without any doofus flies giving us any trouble. But once we go into blueberries or blackberries, yeah. then, then, the, then the trouble picks up. Yeah. Yeah, so you'll have to manage that differently depending on what your what borders you have. Definitely. Um, okay, so uh, feel free to come and ask me any questions about this any other time. But now we're going to switch tracks a little bit. Um, Bev Gerdeman is going to talk about managing mites in red raspberry.